Hello awesome friends, I hope you're well. So last week I had so much fun doing these small pieces of art or ATCs. I thought I would repeat the experience this week but with a different color palette. So I've been toying around with the idea of using neutrals and black and then adding a pop of color. So on here I have Jean Brilliant number one, I have Titan Buff, this is Lunar Black which is a beautiful granulating color by Daniel Smith and I have here deep scarlet and of course a little bit of gold. Um, I'm thinking that the red accents should be minimal but I'm really liking the way these colors play together. So I'm going to be using this color palette and I'm going to be working on a 6x9 sheet and I will cut it up afterwards. All right, so I'm gonna start with Titan Buff and I wanna make sure that I go right up to the edge because I'm gonna cut this paper and I don't wanna to have too necessarily too much white around the edges. And at this point, I'm just making shapes and I'm not thinking about composition. The one thing that I'm thinking about is leaving white space because I've learned from last week <laughs> and also to add the same color all, or, all, all around the page so that when I divide it up um, I have a good amount of each of the colors. I'm going to dig into this color which is warm gray and I find it's a nice complement to this Titan buff. I'm going to flick just to see where these are going to land and then compose with the drops that have fallen. I find it kind of helps a bit if you're stuck. You can flick the color and work on top of these flicks. There's a lot of blobs on there, but trust me, it's going to be okay. <laughs> now I'm going to reach for this Lunar Black, which is a highly granulating color. It is absolutely gorgeous. I'm going to add some blobs, varying the sizes. I'm also going to maybe just go around some of these shapes. Also maybe adding some centers. Now this is diluted, so it's going to give another um, kind of gray color within these circles, which is really fun too. I'm using this brush that I used to favor a lot when I started watercoloring. This is uh, number zero round by Raphael. It's called Petit Gris Pur. And I used to use it a lot when I started with the florals. I haven't touched it probably in like three or four years. Um, so I'm rediscovering it. And I'm really desperately trying to vary the shapes that I'm making. So sometimes I'll use, I'll hold my brush at the other end and then I'll just flick the color and I think this is interesting as well. Otherwise I will be tempted to make circles all the time. Not that there's anything wrong with circles. Um, I love circles but sometimes it's great to vary it up. So again just introducing different shapes and also lines uh, which is fun. I'm gonna add a little bit more of that black Maybe I'll just add dots here and there because it's pretty much dry. And again, I'm not concerned that this is a big blob in the middle because again, we're gonna cut this apart. So the look is gonna be changed drastically. Now at this point, I'm not sure if I should introduce uh, the Jean Brilliant, uh, which I had on my swatch. I will try a little bit. Maybe it'll add an interesting layer. It does add a little bit of luminosity I find to the piece so I'm gonna go ahead and use it. Why not? Why not? It shifts 
the mood all of a sudden. I'm liking it. I'm liking it. So we're going for it. <laughs> okay. Now let's see. Let me flip my work around. It always helps to get a different perspective. And again, I'm not thinking entire uh, of the entire piece, but what I want to do is have these colors well represented in different parts of the paper. Before I add the accent color, which is the deep scarlet, I think I'm going to dry this. This is the deep scarlet and it's pretty potent <laughs> at the moment. So what I'm going to do is add a few accents this way. While I'm doing this, I'm also keeping in mind that, as I've mentioned before, that this paper is going to get cut up. So. Uh, the red, I want it minimal, but I want it represented all around so that when I cut it up, I have at least a little bit of red on each of the pieces. See, this one is too light for my taste, so I'm going to add more pigment. There we go. That's a beautiful color. And then maybe here. And... Here. I'm going to switch to a smaller brush. This is a number four Escoda Versatile. And I'm going to add some gold, of course. And I'm thinking for now of flicking the gold. And I'm undecided whether I'm going to doodle with gold this time around or with black. I may do both. But. Let's see here. I'm very tempted to already do a couple of gold lines around my uh, the blobs here. Ooh, this is interesting. We're bringing it closer. I accidentally went into the red and it's giving me this gorgeous color right there. So I'm not regretting that at all. Uh, let's see, maybe like this. That's fun. All right, in that corner right here. I think I've got a good paper here. I'm going to let this totally dry. I just want to show you my favorite pen for doodling. This is the Uniball Signo DX, but the 0.28 millimeter. And I think you can get it on Amazon or jetpens.com. So you can easily find it. I'm going to zoom in here. And obviously I'm not going to show you the full um, the full doodling or line art because it's going to be too long, but I think you're going to get the idea by what I'm doing right now. I'll show you the first one. So essentially I'm just going around this space in between the lines and adding some line work. Now, a lot of you I know are going to say, oh my gosh, I can't do straight lines. Well, look again, because <laughs> my lines are not straight. They're wobbly and they're short, so it's easier to do them straight. However, I have done probably the pieces that I've enjoyed the most were the ones where I made the lines wobbly. You see here? I'm purposely going crooked. And I think it adds charm, especially to a piece like this where the lines are not the same exact width. The shapes are very organic. The lines also are organic, misshapen. This is a rollerball, which I appreciate because when you're doodling on watercolor paper, and I've talked about this in the past, but watercolor 
Watercolor paper has texture. And if you're using your felt tip markers, especially if they're thin, if they're of small size, you will wear them off a lot faster. A rollerball pen does not wear off. So I've been on the hunt for the perfect pen for me, <laughs> and I finally found it in the DX, this, the Signo DX. Now, this is not permanent ink, so that's one thing to be mindful of. Um, if you add water or more watercolor over this, it will bleed. But I've already established that I'm done with the watercolor on, on this piece. I think this activity would have made a fantastic ASMR video because the sound that I get from the pen scratching on the surface of the watercolor paper is like sandpaper. <laughs> so here it is. I have made three areas where I have those fine lines and now I'm thinking what else can I add to this piece to make it a little bit more finished. So I was thinking of using a bigger uh, pen. This is the Micron Pigma Micron 05 by Sakura, so the tip is quite larger than what I was using. And then maybe adding dots to some of these other shapes and varying the sizes and not making it symmetrical either. It doesn't need much and everybody can do lines and dots. Maybe on this one I might just add a few circles around the middle of the shape. Here maybe I will do marks like this. It's kind of like in between a dot and a line. It almost looks like rectangular in shape. I'm going to make the center of this one here black and when it dries, I'll do this one here as well, I'm going to add some white dots. So I have the Posca paint pen. This is 7.7 millimeter and I'm going to make some dots. inside these centers. Oh gosh, I'm loving this so much. I'm very happy right now. <laughs> I don't know if you can tell, but I'm in my happy place. Like this is the happiest of happy. Uh, this is the happy happy. <laughs> All right, so I need to cut this up. Oh yeah, yes, 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 yes. <laughs> okay, so unfortunately I'm left with this. I'm kind of liking um, the fact that it's a standard size, two and a half by three and a half. It's also the same size as the business card. So, you know, I have little bits and pieces. I can put this in my journal. So I'm not going to cry about this. Oh my goodness, I love these pieces so much. I think I like them better than last week's. I don't know, maybe it's because I had more enjoyment out of them, um, but I wanna show them to you individually. So there's that one. And I don't think I'm going to retouch any of them. I'm kind of liking them as they are. I love the fact that the red and the gold bled together. I think it's really fun. And this one. And the last piece. Yes, all right. I want to put one in a frame <laughs> just because I'm dying to see what it looks like. So I have, uh, these are the same, this is the same frame card that I used last week. Incidentally, unfortunately, I'm not sure if Strathmore has decided to discontinue those, but I cannot find them anywhere anymore. 
they are listed on Amazon, but um, it says not item not available or uh, sold out. So I'm hoping that Strathmore will make more, but I was thinking also of buying um, a die that I could use in my Sizzix machine that would cut a frame of the proper size. The frame has to be a little bit smaller, like two and a quarter by three and a quarter. And I have not found one. So, <laughs> and I'm pretty sure I had one in my stash before I did the purge. And of course I probably gave it away. So shame on me. They're a bit tricky to pop in. But, oh, wow, look at that. <sighs> oh, this is my happy breath, oh, contentment, uh, pure joy. This is pure joy for me. And I honestly would start another page right now. And you don't have to work on a bigger piece like I did. You can cut them up, you cut your paper up uh, before starting to paint. I just like the idea of having little surprises once I cut these pieces apart. But I mean, last week I worked on a smaller piece and I was as satisfied. So you've got different options there to play with. Um, don't restrict yourself to anything. Just go wild and that messes my arrangement. You gotta go. <laughs> go wild. Try new color combinations. Mix your colors and you don't have to have a whole bunch of colors. Colors can be mixed. Uh, watercolor lends itself really well to that. So try different color combinations. Scribble on extra you know, pieces of watercolor paper, or even use the back of old watercolor pieces that you don't particularly like. My sketchbook is full of those. And use the back side because it doesn't have to be like pristine perfect when you're um, trying out color combinations. Use the sketchbook if your sketchbook uh, lends itself really well to watercolor. I work in a mixed media sketchbook so I can use the watercolors in there. Um, use whatever you have at your disposal. Just make sure that you do the work. Make sure that you put pen to paper or brush to paper. Um, anybody can do this. It's really not that hard. It's blobs of colors, it's lines, it's dots, marks. Um, this is my own style. Develop your own. You have probably favorite mark makings that you're used to doing. Um, use those. Just, there's no limit to this style of art, which is probably one of the things that I love the most. But I really do get lost in that type of work, and I don't know why I stayed away from it for so long. So also experiment with other media. Today I did a small piece in my neglected art journal. I haven't used acrylics in probably three to four years and I just did a very quick study of the branches that I have outside my window and it turned out to be uh, a floral painting. <laughs> but just for a few moments I forgot about the watercolors and I just rediscovered the joy of using another medium. So mix them all as well. Why not mixing acrylic with watercolor, with ink, with crayons, anything, anything goes and then at the end of that session, you've got a few fun abstract pieces that you can display like this. Make a gallery wall in your home. Um, you know, display the pieces, play around with them. Frame them simply with just a little bit of cardstock or if you want to put them in frames. I know dollar stores sell really cheap frames and they do sell small ones, so go wild. The most important thing is that you stay creative and you find your happy place, your happy space. And for me, that's what it is. With you, it could be something else, but for me, that's my happy place. So thank you for indulging me. <laughs>
I hope you've enjoyed this video. I want to say a huge thank you to my awesome patrons who allow me to create for free here on YouTube for you. Don't forget to check out the description to see the full list of supplies that I used today. Thank you all so very much for watching. I wish you a wonderful and creative week ahead and I will see you soon.